This is the G.I. Joe Classified Series Target Exclusive Cobra Island Baroness with Cobra Coil Motorcycle. This set was introduced this year in 2020 and has been extremely hard to find. Even though this set should not be any more scarce than the other Cobra Island figures, it's been very hard to find due to poor distribution by both Hasbro and Target. Special thanks to Chris Clements for keeping a close eye on the inventory tracking websites and helping me secure this one. Let's take a look at the box that the figure and vehicle were packaged in, but first I'll note the backdrop you see here was an insert in the box, so I'll place it back in the box so you can get an idea of what that looks like. Here is the box with that backdrop reinserted, so this is what it would look like on target shelves with the figure and vehicle inside, of course. You can see the toys themselves are in this vacuum-formed protector, and there are a few bits still in there that I haven't taken out yet that I don't uh, display with the figure. I will take those out though so you can look at them for this review. There's the G.I. Joe logo with classified series, Baroness with Cobra Coil, and Coil is an acronym. I was looking on this box to see if I could find out what Coil stands for, but I don't see it anywhere. On this corner we have Special Mission Cobra Island, and this is the set that is exclusive to Target. On the other side, we have some gorgeous artwork with the Baroness on the motorcycle and then the Baroness herself on the side of the box. Beautiful artwork. I love this. On the back of the box, we have this overhead view of Cobra Island, and this is standard for all of these Cobra Island exclusive sets. The individual packed figures also have this map on the back. This is different from the map that appeared in the 80s comic book. Even so, it looks pretty cool and it gives you you an idea of uh, what Cobra Island looks like and how it's set up uh, really nicely done. On the top of the box we have the Cobra emblem with a red background, that classified series logo again, and we can see this is number 13 in that series. On the other side we see that number 13 again, and we have these icons which you can go to gijoe.com and look up, and these correspond with specialties for the character. This one is Intelligence Level 4, this is Light Weapons Level 1, this is PsyOps Level 3, and this is Disguise Level 4. The bottom of the box just has the barcode and lots of information in several different languages. I'm going to pull that backdrop out again because I think it looks really nice. And then we will look at the motorcycle and the figure. Let's look at the coil motorcycle. And the first thing I'll say about it is it feels substantial. The plastic does not feel cheap. It doesn't feel too hollow, though it's not perfectly solid, but uh, this is well done. It's well constructed. Uh, it does not feel flimsy in any way. I will point out there are some exposed screw holes on this side, so the other side will be your display side. There is a green tint toward the lower part of the windshield. Uh, that's a nice color gradient. Well done. Uh, it has some green gauges and cobra emblems. I will point out these handlebars are articulated. The handlebars are individually on a ball joint, so they can adjust. Oh, that windshield will also adjust a little bit. Uh, these handlebars will move a bit, so that will compensate for the figure's wrist articulation. So you can get her to hold it in more positions, and that's helpful. Those handlebars are also linked to the front fork steering. In my opinion, it's a great looking motorcycle, and the black, red, and silver color scheme are perfect for a Cobra motorcycle. Looks like it has a little scratch on some of the red paint right out of the box. So another good reason for this to be the display size. There are foot pegs, one on each side to secure the figure on, and there is a kickstand, but the bike will stand up without the kickstand, and I like that. That will help you get more riding poses out of it. The figure has holes on her heels, and those should fit on these foot pegs. They fit reasonably well, maybe not the best. I um, kind of have to pose the figure a bit before you get it on there. Um, the figure is really more going to be secured by the handlebars and the handlebar, once you get it on the figure's hand, which can be a little bit of an ordeal, but we can do it. Once you get the handlebar on the figure's hand, that's not going to come off very easily. So uh, there you have uh, the Baroness on the motorcycle, or she can put her feet on these back pedals here for a more, you know, 
forward go fast look let's take a look at the baroness's accessories and she comes with a significant number of them she has two of these rifles or submachine guns or whatever they are uh, they look very close to the same but they have pegs pegs on opposite sides and that's because they can be used with the vehicle she can either grip them and use them as handheld weapons or they can plug into these holes on the side of the coil motorcycle adding some extra firepower uh, so that is pretty cool. Uh, she could also carry one on her back. She has a hole on her back, but I think this is much better. It adds some firepower to her ride. She has two gold pistols, pretty well sculpted, nice details. Uh, they are both the same, just two copies of the same pistol. And she can holster these. On the figure, there is this web belt that is a separate piece. It's not intended to be removable, but it has a really cool red cobra emblem right on the center. And in the back, she has two holsters, so she can holster each of those pistols like so, and they fit in pretty well, and they are ready for her to draw from the back. So that is a nice bonus feature. I like it when the figure can holster the weapons. Destro also came with a gold pistol. As you can see, it's not the same gold pistol. It's it's definitely different, and it's also a bit shinier. I'd kind of like the Baroness's pistol to be in that shinier gold plastic. Next, she has this dagger with a gold cobra head on it. Really cool looking, very tiny, intricate details, very well done. And she has a sheath for that. This separate piece on her leg, again, it doesn't look like it's intended to be removable, but the knife will fit in there. And of course we want the knife in there with the cobra head facing forward. I want to see that really sweet detail there. Uh, so she's got several holsters for her weapons. Next, she has this Cobra coiled laser blaster that appears to be what this is. This is a laser blaster, but it's all coiled up like a Cobra, and it's intended to coil around her arm, which is a really innovative and unique way to uh, have a figure hold a weapon. So it can be a little bit tricky to get on the arm, um, and there's not really a grip. I guess you can try to put her hand around the, the Cobra coil here in the front, but um, that's how it's supposed to work. She has this coiled Cobra that shoots lasers out of its fanged mouth. That's interesting, very science fiction, but also kind of cool, and it looks nice. It's very, very well sculpted with lots of cool details. Finally, we have this black helmet. This helmet is all black. It has no other colors. Uh, it has no other paint applications, but it is nicely sculpted with some fangs on the visor. Really well done. And the Baroness can wear this helmet, sort of. This is an alternate head. You can see the hole in there for the neck post. You should be able to take off the primary head and put this helmeted head in its place. Now, I'm not going to try that because it is possible to break the neck post on these figures, and that's not something I'm going to risk with a figure that was so hard for me to find. In this case, I will just show you the helmet rather than put it on the figure. Let's do a quick compare contrast between the classified Baroness and the 1984 three and three quarter inch Baroness. And a lot of the details from the original figure are carried over to the classified figure. The black uniform, the red Cobra emblem on her chest, uh, the glasses, even some of the ridges on the legs are the same on the classified figure. The classified figure has has a lot more detail, as it should, because they have the scale to add more detail. It also has a couple colors other than black and red, as we shall see momentarily. These classified figures have pretty good articulation. Uh, this one has a ball-jointed head, but she has a hairpiece. That hairpiece, though, does not really get in the way very much of that head movement. Good range of motion on that. Good range of motion on the shoulder as well. 
Um, she does have articulation at the elbow, but I'd like to see a bit more articulation at the elbow. I'd like to see more of an elbow bend. Uh, she has swivels at the wrist. Doesn't look like she has hinges at the wrist, just swivels. I guess there is a little bit of up and down motion on the right wrist. There is a cut just above her rib cage, but you can't get much movement out of that. There is more movement at the hip. If you want to get her body turned, that's really where you're going to get the articulation for that. Uh, there is an excellent leg split. Uh, there is movement on the legs at the thigh. Forward, really good. Back, not so much. It tends to flare out to the side a bit. There is a cut at the thigh, so movement at the thigh. Uh, there are double jointed knees, and she has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's look at the figure itself. This head sculpt is amazing. It's very lifelike, very natural. She has a black hair piece in soft plastic and that looks great. Uh, she has glasses and those glasses are a separate piece but they are not removable. They are black and gold horn rimmed glasses and they have lenses. That is amazing. That's a really nice touch. Look at the subtlety of that smile with her lipstick you can just barely see her teeth but her teeth are painted in that's just too good she has armor on her shoulders and on the left shoulder it looks like a cobra head that's really cool she has this black chest plate and a red cobra emblem that is molded in and painted on her chest that's not just a paint application that's in the mold on her upper arms and on her midsection there's just a little bit of dark gray or pewter paint it's very subtle but that's all you need just to make the details pop a little bit with this gorgeous black uniform you don't want anything less subtle than that. She has black forearm guards with red cobra emblems on each one, and she has black gloves. She has that web belt that we looked at a moment ago. It is a separate piece, but it doesn't appear to be removable. It has a red cobra emblem right in the center at the buckle. It has some pouches, and of course it has those holsters in the back. Really well done. There's more of that pewter color paint on her legs and on her waist piece. There's that separate part for the knife sheath that goes around her left leg. And then there's the leg armor with some knee pads and some armor plate on her thighs and on her shins. Looks really good. And there's even a spot of gold paint on her ankles, these little rings on her ankles, and she has pointed boots. In a lot of ways, this Baroness figure is the anti-Scarlet. The Scarlet figure was okay, but it had some problems with some of the accessories wanting to fall apart and with the colors being a little too busy. With the Baroness, you have the right colors in the right proportions, you have excellent accessories, you have excellent sculpting. It's about as good as you can do a six inch G.I. Joe figure. Would I recommend this figure? If you have a classified Destro, I would highly recommend looking into a classified Baroness because they look so great together. I mean, they look like they were made for each other. I mean, just look at them together. That's one of the travesties about this being a Target exclusive figure. Some people People will have a hard time getting it, but if you can get it without paying scalper prices, I would recommend looking into it. Some collectors don't like the motorcycle. I like the motorcycle just fine. This looks like something the Baroness would ride. These classified figures are not all created equal. There are some you could pass on without missing much, but this is not one of them. There is a reason people are going crazy for this figure. There's a reason why people are trying so hard to find this figure, even though it's been very difficult to find at retail. Maybe you can skip second versions of Destro or second versions of Roadblock, but this one is one not to miss. I just hope you can find it. Good luck. That was my review of the G.I. Joe Classified Series Baroness and the Coil Cycle. I hope you enjoyed it. I usually do vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews, and I usually do them once a week. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I also have Patreon, which helps keep this show going, thanks to all the names you see on the screen right now. You can get some special perks there, like a sketch or early access to reviews, or a secret code book so you can decode the messages you sometimes see in my videos. Videos. Thanks for watching. It's time to get away from Cobra and back to G.I. Joe. So until next time, remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.